optical clocks can reach accuracies at the level of 10 to the minus 18. If the clock started running at the Big Bang, by now it will have lost one second. This entire lab is the Ethereum Ion optical clock. Under here is our actual operational ion trap. And inside our ion trap, there is a single ion of Ethereum, which is confined in the middle of the trap by electric fields. This is an image of the ion fluorescing in between uh, the two conical electrodes. And the light here is the uh, scattering from the cooling laser. The ion itself is the very basis of the optical clock. Standard atomic clocks are based on an atomic transition in the cesium atom, probed with microwaves. The optical clocks are based on optical transition frequencies. Because visible light has a frequency that is five orders of magnitude higher than microwaves, optical clocks are about a hundred times more accurate than the current standard of cesium atomic clocks. We trap a single ion uh, in an ultra-high vacuum environment with a combination of static and time-varying electric fields. At this point, we probe the clock transition of the Ethereum ion with our um, ultra-stable laser. This is our main ion trap at the basis of our optical clock that has been running for several years now. But we are also developing a second ion trap, very similar to the first. We plan to later uh, make direct clock comparisons between these two ion traps, which are both ethereum ion clocks. The ethereum ion is particularly sensitive to the variation of the fine structure constant, and so it's a great optical clock to use in the tests of fundamental physics. For example, there is a theory that the fundamental constants might not actually be constants, and they might be varying, uh, or fluctuating or drifting, and optical clocks can achieve a level of accuracy that can detect these changes. The fine structure constant is linked to the energy separation between two energy levels in an atomic transition. If it were varying, then these energy levels would be moving apart. And so if we compare an optical clock that is very sensitive to the variation of the fine structure constant, and another one that is not sensitive so over time, we will be able to see that if there is a slow drift in the frequency ratio or an oscillation, this would be related to a possible variation of the fine structure constant. A very interesting one is the geodesy application. We are able to detect a difference in height of one centimeter just by measuring a different optical clock frequency because this is the level of precision that we can measure in terms of a change in the gravity potential at such a small level. All of these different optics cleaning up the laser light or changing its polarization, adding an offset to its frequency to be more in tune with the cooling transition of the iron. It is absolutely crucial to actually know that our optical clock is performing well and that we have characterized all of its systematic uncertainties correctly, we need to compare this to another clock. There are other optical clocks at NPL that we can make this comparison, but there are also other optical clocks in Europe that we have made comparisons. But it is quite difficult to talk about the accuracy of an optical clock because you can't be more accurate than the current definition of the second, which is based on the cesium atomic frequency. And so this is actually one of the main motivations for redefining the second in terms of an optical frequency. So then we bring the level of achievable uncertainty two orders of magnitude down. If the definition was improved, then optical clocks can really achieve this level of accuracy even when making an, an absolute frequency measurement. This will also allow optical clocks to more readily contribute to the international time scale with lower levels of uncertainty. So, yeah, it's easy to think of the second just being a second, but we must relate it to the definition, which is uh, a frequency of an atomic transition. And if we redefine it based on a much higher frequency, then the second, let's say, has a higher resolution. So it's all kind of connected, the, the accuracy of the frequency that um, is at the basis of the definition will then make the second itself more accurate.